Hello and welcome back to Master Meteorology Advanced, the educational weather series diving into the math and physics that drive weather. Our topic of the day is the hydrostatic equation. Let's get started. So diving into my screen here, you see the four governing equations of meteorology. These equations include the horizontal momentum equation, the hydrostatic equation, the continuity equation, and the thermodynamic equation. But today, we're just going to be focusing on the hydrostatic equation. So how you get the hydrostatic equation is actually from the vertical momentum equation. Now, when you first see this, it probably looks pretty confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down term by term. And once you understand each individual term, like just that guy, just that guy, then we're going to put them all together to understand the equation. We're going to eliminate some of them through scale analysis. And then I'll even throw up some figures and animations to help you kind of understand this, what would be seemingly complicated equation. So we're going to start with this first term here. This is going to be vertical acceleration. If you watch my video on the horizontal momentum equation, you'll remember that W is just velocity in the vertical direction. So like going up into space. So if you have velocity over a change in time, that's literally the definition of acceleration. That one's just going to be a vertical acceleration. This next term, you recognize that P, that's pressure. That right there is rho, density. And that's going to be the pressure gradient force. Next, we have, if you recognize that symbol F, that is kind of a symbol for Coriolis. It's not kind of a symbol. It is the symbol for Coriolis. And that is the Coriolis force right there in the vertical direction. And this F, you'll remember, is 2 omega sine phi. This omega being Earth's rate of rotation, it's just constant, and phi being latitude. The reason it's latitude is because Coriolis is going to change depending on your degree and latitude. If you change just on your longitude, the Coriolis doesn't change at all. At the equator, Coriolis is zero. At the pole, it's maximized. So as you go north, Coriolis gets stronger. And next, we have gravity. And lastly, we have friction. Now, if you notice, I've been writing numbers next to these. Acceleration is 10 to the negative 7. Pressure gradient force is 10. Coriolis, 10 to the negative 3. Gravity is 10. Friction force, 10 to the negative 7. And the reason I've been writing these numbers is these are typical numbers that you get for each of, each one of these forces. Like gravity, you always hear 9.8, so we just approximate it to 10. And then Coriolis force, you know, it's stronger than the friction force, but it's still pretty small. Pressure gradient force, you see, is pretty large. So this is something cool that meteorologists do. It's called scale analysis. Basically what they say is that if you have some larger terms and some really small terms, you can just throw the small terms out. And the reason they do this is to basically make these equations easier. Remember, a lot of these equations were worked out before computers. So in order to be able to actually do the math, they had to simplify it as much as possible before really diving into an actual forecast. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all those small terms. We're just going to cross them out. This is going to leave us with just the pressure gradient force and the gravity force. We're going to take that row over to the right side, and we're going to end up with the hydrostatic equation. Here you see it's dp dz equals negative rho g, or in simpler words, pressure gradient force equals the gravity force. Now here's two figures, and there's a little animation built in to help you understand what this actually means. Pressure gradient force equals gravity force sounds kind of vague, so we're going to dive in so you can actually picture it. Think of this as a column of air. And how I always think of pressure is imagine I'm standing right now in a box, one meter by one meter. If that box continued all the way up to the top of the atmosphere, and then I had a scale on my head, and my scale was weighing how much the entire atmosphere weighs above me, that's going to be the pressure I am feeling right here. So the pressure you're feeling is basically just a column of air above you. And what we find is that in that column of air, 
you probably know that the pressure changes. At the surface, it's typically, typically about 1,013 millibars, and then obviously in space, it's like zero. So what this equation tells us is how that pressure is actually gonna change, and you see it's a function or it's balanced with gravity. Now you see the pressure force is going up, gravity force is pushing down, or pulling down, and you could probably picture why gravity is pulling down. Throw an apple into the air, it's gonna fall down. Gravity pulls down to the ground. But you'd think pressure, it's the weight of the atmosphere above you, it's probably pushing down on you, right? Well, we find it's actually pushing out against gravity. So to kind of better picture this, I build this figure here, where we have in this box a bunch of gases, and in this box it's a vacuum, there's nothing in there. If you know anything about gases, they like to diffuse. So what do you think is gonna happen if we were to break that wall down? If we were to break this wall, exactly, those gases are gonna diffuse into the other box. Now, I want you to imagine this is like our atmosphere. Right here, this is the surface, and the vacuum represents space. So, you would think there's no walls between us and space, so all those gases really want to just escape out into space, and we would have no atmosphere down here. Lucky for us, we have gravity, which keeps those gases towards the surface. So if we throw these gas particles onto our column of air, and this represents an infinitesimal slice of that air, we find that at any point, the pressure pushing up equals the gravity pushing down. So the pressure is going to be pushing up because those gases want to just escape into the vacuum of space, but then gravity is going to pull them back down. And that's basically what the hydrostatic equation tells us. Now I'll just go over this part really quickly because I actually haven't used this too much in the different homework problems that we've been using, but you will see it sometimes, so it's important to understand that you can also get the hydrostatic equation from the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law being P equals rho RT. You know T is temperature, P equals pressure, rho equals density, RD is the dry gas constant, and this guy here, I believe that's a sigma, equals rho or one over rho, and that's specific volume. So we're gonna manipulate this a little bit, just like we did with the vertical, mo the vertical momentum equation. So we're gonna manipulate the ideal gas law to get a different form of the hydrostatic equation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this rho, put it on the left side, take pressure, put it on the right side, and we're gonna end up with one over rho equals RT over P. That one over rho, we can replace with specific volume. And then that RT over P can also be written as delta phi over delta P. That symbol there represents geopotential, and that's so important that I'm actually gonna do an entire video about that. So subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that video. So what does this equation mean? The main takeaway is that the thermodynamic state of the atmosphere is determined by pressure, density, and temperature. And these variables are related by the ideal gas law. And depending on these variables, we're going to see kind of the same thing we saw in that last equation, just the balance of pressure and gravity. The main summary, using the vertical momentum equation and scale analysis, we define a hydrostatic environment where the vertical pressure gradient force is equal to the gravity force. Hopefully this video made sense to you. If you wanna see more videos like this, I'm making them my entire time throughout grad school. So hopefully you will be able to learn exactly what I learned. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. As a reward and thank you for watching the entire video, I'm giving you a free PDF download of the video slides so that you can go back over the material and a free PowerPoint download so that you can go through it step by step. You can find those resources by clicking the link in the description or by going to holthanleyweather.com. As always, if you learned something new in this video, click subscribe so that you can learn more in the future and click more videos to start that learning now.
Thanks for watching.